In this video, I will let you know how to get started with your very first project using the new and advanced Blink IoT platform. And while watching this video, you'll be learning about what is a template and how to create our own template inside Blink app, what is a data stream and how to create a data stream, how to air new devices inside our Blink IoT platform, how to air Wi-Fi credentials over the air onto our ESP based boards. And in the end, we'll be making a very simple project of controlling an LED using both mobile dashboard as well as web dashboard. So this is kind of a very basic video just to get started with the new and advanced Blink IoT platform. So let's get started. This video is sponsored by LTM which is a PCB designer based software company. Now if I tell you one very interesting feature of this software then here in LTM designer you can design rigid flex PCB. Now what is that? So till now you must have designed the PCB which has like rigid like solid PCBs if you are not able to bend. But here in LTM you can design a PCB in which some of the parts are rigid solid and some of the parts are flexible which can bend and the PCB can you know uh, we can bend it in a two fold manner just like the modern day smartphone right so this is a really very trusting useful and unique feature of the software well you can also try out this and many other unique and interesting features of this designer software by just clicking on the link mentioned in the description yes by clicking on the link you'll get access to the free trial version of this software so go ahead try out the free trial version of LTM designer software now to create a project inside the new Blink platform, you first need to configure your web dashboard and for that you have to go to a website called as blink.cloud. Okay? So here first of all you need to make an account. In my case I already made it so I'll quickly uh, log into my account. So here is my blink.cloud account, basically blink web dashboard. Okay? So here as you can see it says start by creating your first template. Now what is a template? See, previously for making the new Blink based project, we need to create a project inside the Blink application and that project was dedicatedly made for only one single hardware device. Okay. Now in the new Blink platform, that concept is changed to templates. So in the templates, we need to add the same like uh, variables, widgets and everything. The concept is same, but by creating the template, we can use that exactly same template in n number of device. Okay. Earlier we were able to use only one single device, but now by creating one single template, we can implement this template maybe in n number of ESP32 boards or n number of Node MCU boards. Okay, so that's the difference between the previous and this and new generation of the Blink. Okay, so now the question is how to create the Blink template. Let me show you. Just click on new template. Now here you need to give a name to this template. I will give the name as LED Blink because in the end we'll be making a project of blinking LED. Okay, uh, the hardware device will be ESP32 board in my case. Connection type is Wi-Fi, and here we have to uh, add a description in case if you want. I'll leave it as it is. Okay, I'll click on the done button and it will create a template for me. Okay, so this is the template. Now here inside the template we can add multiple information just like the template name hardware that we already decide or already given here we can provide a category to it is it a fan it is a doorbell is it a sensor anything like that okay so if you want to add a category you can add this category here i will give the category as light okay straight after that uh, into the next section we have a metadata concept now metadata is considered to be the additional data which we are giving to our product or project okay just like what is the name of that particular device that we are using who is the owner of that device where is the location of this particular thing time zone hotspot name everything so this is all the additional data which is given to the device to make its own unique identity okay so by looking at the metadata we can you know uh, come to know what's the purpose of this particular project okay so this again is an additional thing if you want you can you can give it if you don't you can leave it okay i will leave it as of now next come is the data stream okay so what is data stream so earlier we were having the concept of adding digital pins and virtual pins so first of all the concept of digital pins is completely removed from the new blink app so there is no more digital pins as of now only virtual pins and some more pins they have added okay so digital pins is completely removed and to add those virtual pins we have to create a data stream for that I'll let you know uh, how to create it and in the meantime you'll come to know what's the concept of data stream okay I'll click on new data stream and here as you can see there are three options available is it a virtual pin is it enumerable or is it a location as of now for our project we'll be creating a virtual pin now the concept of virtual pin is familiar to all the blink users so no need to explain it okay so let's give the name to this uh, particular pin I'll give the name as LED pin okay 
After that, the virtual pin will be V0. You can select any of the virtual pin, again, same as the previous one. Now this time we are asked to provide a data type. Is it an integer, a double or a string? So whenever you want to just pass on the integer numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, select integer. Whenever you want to pass the decimal numbers like 0 0.001, stuff like that, select double. And whenever you're passing the statements, select the string. In my case, as we want to just turn on and off the LED, so 0 and 1, so we'll select integer, okay? Now here you can decide the minimum and the maximum range of this particular variable. In my case, zero and one is completely fine. You can also add a default value. I'll add the default value as zero. Okay. That's it. I'll click on the create button. It will create a data stream for me. So data stream is basically that same virtual pin that we are creating. Okay. I hope now you're clear with the data stream concept. Okay. After that, we have a section called as events. Now, this is something which I think should be covered in maybe some upcoming videos because this is not something basic. This has some like advanced features. So we'll skip it as of now. Then comes the web dashboard. So in my introduction video, as I said, we have now two kinds of dashboard, the mobile dashboard and the web dashboard, and both can be separately configured to control the appliances. Okay. So we can control the appliances with the help of this laptop as well as the mobile phone. Earlier, it was just using the mobile phones. Okay. So let's just configure the web dashboard. So for the web dashboard, we have very limited number of widgets. We have no more fancy widgets here because, Hey, come on, web dashboard are, are uh, provided for all the professionals or the, uh, what you can say, admin peoples. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll quickly add a switch here okay and click on the setting icon to configure it i'll name this as led and we'll choose the data stream as virtual pin v0 okay now i think you will be completely clear with the data stream concept okay so for the on value will be one and the off value will be zero i'll keep it as it is and click on the save button so with this we have configured the web dashboard and we can like send the data zero and one using this button but we won't stop here. Let us move on to the next part, which is the mobile dashboard. Now mobile dashboard can be configured inside the mobile only. Okay. So now what I'll do is uh, before moving to the phone side, I'll quickly click on the save button to save all the configurations. Okay. So now I'll click on the info button. So with this, we have completely configured the blink web dashboard. Okay. Now we are left with the coding part and configuring the blink mobile application. Now first we'll go with the coding part. Let me show you the steps for that. So for the coding, first we need to have the latest Blink library. And for that, you need to go to this GitHub repository, which link is mentioned in the description. After that, you just need to download the zip file of this particular library. After downloading, just open up Arduino, go to sketch, into include library, into add zip library. Go to downloads. And here, just search for the file which you have just downloaded. After that, select this file and click on the choose button to add the library onto your Arduino IDE. In my case, the library is already added. That's why it's showing this error. After adding the libraries, go to files, into examples, into, into blink, into blink.adjunct and adjunct ESP32 because I will be uploading the code into my ESP32 board. Okay. I'll maximize this window. Now here it is asking to provide the information of template ID and the device name. So earlier we need to provide the authentication token. Now to upload the credentials over the air, you no more need to add the authentication token. Rather you need to provide this to uh, uh, information, which you can get it by going into the web dashboard. So here is my web dashboard here inside the info section. Here are the two details. I'll simply click here to copy the code, go back to the Arduino code and I will simply paste that thing here. That's it. Now what I'll do, I'll add a code here to uh, change the status of an LED as soon as I receive signal on virtual pin V0. Now the code is exactly the same that we were doing inside the previous version of the Blink library. Okay, let me show you the steps. So by adding this function, you'll be able to receive the data coming on virtual pin V0. Okay, so now what I'll do is after receiving the data, I will be uh, directly sending this data to pin 15 of my ESP32 board and uh, whatever the data is, I'll be simply sending it to my pin 15 after that here I will declare pin mode as 15 comma output okay with this I'll be able to turn on and off the LED based on the virtual pin v0 data that's pretty much it now I'll select the right board which is do it ASP32 David v1 right port which is not at all connected let me just connect my ESP board okay now I'll select the right board and directly hit the upload button so with this, we are completed with the coding part as well. Now we are left with to configure our Blink mobile application and also to add the Wi-Fi credentials to our ESP32 board because you notice we haven't provided the Wi-Fi credentials inside the code because we'll be providing using the app. So let me show you the last step as well. So first of all, you need to download the new Blink application, which is available for both Android and iOS. I'll be leaving the link for both the platforms in the description so you can download it. 
after downloading you need to log into your account so just log into the same account which you have created on side your uh, blink web dashboard after logging in you will be getting a page like this okay so first of all if you're not able to see this development mode what you could do is you have to click on this icon go inside my profile and you just need to turn on this developer mode to become the developer of your particular blink project okay after that what you do is you need to click on add new device okay so now uh, you need to bring the esp32 board which you have just programmed closer to your uh, mobile phone after that click on the ready button now it will automatically find the nearby hotspot created by the uh, esp board let's click on join button after that it will join the hotspot of the esp board and now we can easily enter the wi-fi credentials of our wi-fi router in my case i am having only one wi-fi network nearby i'll click on it and i will add the password of this particular wi-fi network after that just click on continue and now this will be sending the wi-fi credentials directly to my esp32 board and after that as you can see now it is asking us to name the device i'll keep the name as it is click on continue and click on done i'll click on exit to app because i don't want to add new device and we are done with adding the wi-fi credentials to our esp32 board now our esp32 board is connected with the wi-fi network and it is now ready to talk to the blink cloud server okay so now we are left with the very last step which is to configure our blink mobile dashboard and for that you just click on this icon after that just step on the screen and as you can see here are all the widgets which you can use they have removed couple of widgets and they have added a couple of widgets as well for our basic project i'll be adding the simple button here and after that i'll tap on the button to configure it so it's exactly the same as previous one you can name this button so here previously we were asked to add the digital or virtual pin but now everything is changed to data stream so i'll click on data stream and i'll select virtual pin v0 which is the led pin i want to change the mode to switch and on off label will be on and off that's it okay and here we can also change the color so new blink platform has all the widgets customizable we can change the color we can change the text size everything okay so yeah that's pretty much it click on the cross button and click on the cross button again and we have successfully configured our blink mobile dashboard as well so now we'll be able to send the data using the blink mobile dashboard and when you click on the back button, you will be redirected to the home page where we'll be able to see the number of devices. As of now, we have only one single device. That's why it is uh, you know, displaying only one single device here. Okay. Now, here's one very interesting thing inside the new Blink platform. You can add a single button or a display inside the main uh, device screen. Let me show you. Just click on this button. Just long press on this icon. And here you'll get a window like this. Now here you can also change the icon of this particular thing. I'll change the icon to bulb if it is available. No, it's not available. So I'll change it to light. Mm, maybe Yeah, bulb is here. Okay. So I change the icon of this main device. Now here I can tap on this three icon and I will click on change style type. Now here I can choose any of the type. Now I'll be choosing the type as button because I want to uh, I make this icon act as a button. I'll select a button here. I'll select the data stream as V0 because I want to send the data to the virtual pin V0 and it will be acting as a switch. And we can change it to square or circle if you want and we can change the on and off colors as well. That's pretty much it. I'll click on the cross button, click on the cross button again. And as you can see, now I can also control the LED by just clicking on this button. I no longer need to go inside the device. I can control or interact with my LED by just clicking on this button. So this is kind of useful feature when you want to, you know, uh, control only one single device. You no longer need to press this and go inside and scroll the widgets. Just tap here and the things will be done. So that's pretty much it. Everything is done like web, web dashboard is done, mobile dashboard is done and the coding is done. Now we just need to see this project in action. So now here I have connected the LED to the digital pin 15 of my ESP32 board. And now let us see if it can be controlled with the mobile app or not. As you can see, I'm able to control the LED from this, uh, we can say tile, you can say, okay. And when I go inside this uh, device, I can still control this LED with the help of mobile dashboard. So yeah, it's perfectly working. Now let us test uh, it with the web dashboard, okay. Let us check it out. For the web dashboard, you first need to click on this icon and you need to go inside the device. As you can see, the LED widget appears here. Let us test it out if it works or not. Okay, as you can see, I'm able to control the LED with the help of the web dashboard as well. And along with this, I'm also getting the real time status of the uh, web dashboard onto my mobile dashboard. Okay, so this all is in sync because all widgets are connected to the virtual pin V0. Okay, so I'm able to uh, do my first ever project with the help of the new Blink app. 
So yeah, that was all about our very first video on how to use the Blink app to add a new device and a new template. I hope you enjoyed it and got to know something new from it. Now are you interested in learning more about using the new Blink app and learning its new features? Well, if it's so, consider subscribing to this channel because I will be definitely creating way more videos of this new Blink platform. That being said, do like the video if you really loved it. And now, just wait for my next video to explore, learn, share with me, Techie SMS.